in case of personal loans given by the bank they expect that in case of employed people the take home salary is not less than dash of their gross salary 50% then this is 80 let me make this 80 50 80 40 or 30 it should not be less than dash so what is it it should not be more than yes 50% okay 50% of the salary it should not be less than 50% of the salary for which of the following purposes a personal loan can be used so what are the purposes for which PL can be used to meet the social commitment to meet the social commit social and financial commitment to meet the social financial and family commitment for any of the purpose above or other purposes so what is the answer for this yeah to meet the social commitment or yeah it is to meet the social commitment or social financial or social financial family yeah a b c or is it d any of the above or other purposes correct the answer is comment section d any of the above or other purposes here personal personal means free hand no one can force you to use this funds here or there okay so it can be used free hand for anything if you want okay that's why it's called as personal it's basically personal loan is unsecured loan remember this personal loan is unsecured no security is asked in personal loan but some banks do ask for it some bank depending on the risk appetite okay some banks do ask for the uh, for some bike or some minor uh, collateral as such okay but uh, remember the rule is personal loan means unsecured number one then how is the personal loan given personal loan is always given on the basis of your credit rating credit rating can be generally we use civil right many of the banks use civil civil right so this pl can be used in this way it can be given in this way okay a rate of interest in case of personal loan is as dash these loans are dash so the rate of interest in case of personal loans is dash okay so what is it low as these loans are secured high as these loans are secured low as these loans are unsecured high as these loans are unsecured so answer this it is rate of interest in case of pl is obviously isn't it it is high because the loans are unsecured remember logic is very clear loans which are secured will always have low rate of interest low roi okay loans which are unsecured unsecured will always have high right rule is simple you only give suppose if you are going to give funds to anyone if you are taking any security you can give some lineage or you can give some leverage okay regarding this roi but if you are not taking any security then you will definitely charge higher roi right the moratorium period in case of plc is personal loan what is the moratorium period one month two month three months six months what is the moratorium period first you tell me what is the moratorium period moratorium period means again i have taken it earlier also moratorium period means where here in general uh, loans what do we pay general emi okay let me clarify in mathematical format now emi means what principal right principal plus interest that is emi so in this moratorium we don't have the principal we have only interest okay so this is also called as during this moratorium period the customer pays only interest that is also called as some banks call it pre emi okay some banks call this pre emi 
generally this moratorium period in case of is in case of housing loans generally it is 18 months right 18 months for housing also it is for any other loan which other loan does it uh, does the moratorium period is there longer moratorium period which other loan forget this personal loan i'll ask you one simple question which other loan is having a uh, large amount of moratorium period or huge moratorium period which one it is education loan okay education loan has a huge moratorium period it has a huge moratorium period what is the moratorium period in education loan course plus one year right suppose it is engineering then four years plus one year five years if it is medical five years plus one year six years okay so this this was about the moratorium period but what is the question now the moratorium period in case of personal loan is one month two month three months in fact there is no moratorium period in personal loans no zero but if it in exam they give you this question then the answer will be one month okay what do they consider as moratorium period over here the moratorium period the logic behind this is when does the customer start repayment obviously your customer starts the repayment after one month of disbursement of the loan isn't it so that's why moratorium period is considered as one month actually it is zero months okay but if in the exam it comes the moratorium period in case of this personal loans is one month okay which all other loans does the moratorium period is uh, one month other loans second hand housing second hand housing moratorium period is again one month why because it's already prepared house is already constructed so you need to just disburse the loan and give the start the emi right there also you have car loan one month moratorium all these are zero moratoriums but for exam if the question comes and you have to answer between these only then you have to answer one month okay personal loans are generally repayable in a period of 12 months 24 months 36 months 48 months now this depends on the bank to bank account generally but what do we see yeah generally generally it depends again i said bank to bank but generally it is 36 months some banks do give the morat uh, this uh, loan period of 48 months also 48 months also given now huh? you can check present status but some banks i am saying some banks that's why this word is used over here is generally what do 90 percent of the banks do 90 percent of the banks do it for 36 months okay 10 percent year and there are always a difference right some banks give the moratorium this uh, repayment period of 12 months also in pl you check the credit card systems now all the credit card companies are giving the personal loans now they are giving it for six months also okay so you can design your own product nowadays there is nothing uh, written rule as such okay nowadays we have that NAC system right what is that NAC system anyone knows nach right automated clearing house national automated clearing house this NAC uh, has given the free hand to the banks banks can design their own product own emi systems design okay their own EMI system, their own EMI system means suppose if I want the EMI for one month every third day, I can have it, right? Means EMI is equated monthly installment. It is not EMI then we won't call it EMI. We'll call it EDI, equated daily installment. So suppose if I want the loan to be repaid in one month only, after a period of every three days. So I can design it. That's why this NAC is very important institution. It has changed the total banking scenario now. Okay. So the PL are generally repayable in a month in a period of 36 months. For repayment uh, of personal loans, bank obtained dash for payment on due date. Authority later to debit the deposit account. FDR as a security for the loan. 
post dated checks and any of the above. See here, payment on the due date, on the due date. So what do you apply? What do you get from here? Authority letter, FDR as a security. Security some banks do take, as I told you earlier, some banks do take the security, but that is not the answer to this question. Due date. We have this authority letter means nowadays we directly take this SI standing instruction, right? This authority letter is nothing nowadays. It's directly SI we call it. Post dated checks nowadays no PDCs, right? How many PDCs do you take when you give disburse the loan? Everyone. How many PDCs do you take when you disburse the loan? All you guys tell me in the comment section. How many PDCs now you take when you disburse uh, any loan? Let's say personal loan, home loan, car loan, anything. How many PDCs do you take? Earlier we used to take that 36 PDA, PDCs, then change those PDCs, all these things used to happen. Now, no, even one PDC is enough and that is also need, not needed. But for that negotiable instrument act, we need that one PDC. Otherwise nothing is needed. Okay. So one PDC we take it for formality for that negotiable instruments act. Otherwise no PDC is need, needed, right? Directly on the SI, everything can be run. Okay. So we take this authority letter from, from to depot to debit the deposit account or we call it SI nowadays. Okay. The disbursement of personal loans is generally in one go in a period of one to two months in installments and any of the above. So disbursement of PL is generally what? In one go period of one to two months in installments any of the in a bank. So answer me everyone in the comment section answer please. What is this? Yes, yes, yes. I am seeing this answer. All of you are typing this as A in one go. Of course, now majority of the banks give this in one go only, but it's not compulsory. It can be one to two months. It can be in installments, anything. Suppose if I, I am having a personal loan, means I am the customer. I require a personal loan, but I don't require it right now. I require some part of it now and some part of it later. So why should I pay the interest immediately? Interest is always charged on what amount? Interest is charged on that amount which is disbursed. Okay, get it. see this. See this point. Suppose I am the customer. I need. Suppose I have taken a PL of PL of let's say five lakhs. But I don't need this PL right now. Complete five lakhs. I need right now one lakh rupees. After three months, I need three lakh rupees. And after this uh, last, whatever, what is remaining uh, after two months, okay? So three plus one, four and one, five. So after this, uh, la on the last month, this, I require one lakh rupees. So if this is the case, and if you disburse me complete five lakhs now only, see here, if all the five lakhs is disbursed now only, now the EMI will start from on what amount? This complete five lakhs, right? Complete five lakhs, I'll have to pay this EMI. So this interest will be charged on complete 5 lakhs over here. But I don't need it right now. So why should I pay for your extra 3 lakhs and 1 lakhs? So what do I do? Uh, I'll ask the bank to disburse 1 lakh now. 3 lakh later. 1 lakh later. So what happens? My EMI will be over here. Will be on 1 lakh only. Up to this part. EMI on 1 lakh. EMI on 1 lakh only right this on this part up to this huh? up to this my emi will be on emi your emi will be on it will change your emi will be on 4 lakhs and after this from this date emi will be on 5 lakhs welcome to adapt 24/7 we are in the scholar series of ABM. Here we are covering important theory, numericals and objective questions. So follow the series from the start. Let's start. When the items included in a sample are based on the judgment of the individual conducting the sample, the sample, the sample is said to be non-random. Is it true or false? We are talking of this A1 now. A. 
when the items included in the sample are based on the judgment of the individual conducting the sample the sample is said to be non random what do you say guys type in the comment section true or false i want the answer only in true or false individual conducting the sample judgment of the individual conducting the sample so it is yes 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 it is correct the answer is here individual conducting the sample this is a type of non probability sampling so the answer for this is true okay the answer for this is true everyone okay one second so the answer is true over here let me mark it over here true okay second one a statistic is a characteristic of a population now this is a simple one you must answer this a statistic is a characteristic of a population true or false what do you say statistic is a characteristic of a population let me see everyone think over it what is population what is sample suppose if i find the mean of population what is it called as suppose if i find the mean of a sample what is it called as mean of a sample is called as statistic and mean of a population is called as parameter so what does it mean a statistic is a characteristic of not a population but it's for the sample so this answer is false okay false over here okay got it everyone answer is false next one see such questions are asked to you in the exam and you need to be very clear in your mind about it a sampling uh, plan that selects members a sampling plan that selects members from a population at uniform intervals in time order or space is called as stratified sampling so sampling plan that selects members from a population so at uniform intervals this is an important word over here uniform intervals so the sampling plan which selects the members at uniform intervals is called a stratified sampling is it true type fast in the comment section true or false what do you think true or false true or false yes it is called as true or false true false yes firstly what are the types of samplings probability samplings there are four types of probability samplings what are those one is simple random yes type in the comment section one is simple random second one is yes everyone in the comment section please yes 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 one is simple random second is systematic correct systematic second one right third one stratified correct and fourth one cluster got it so here this stratified is the right answer or no now you might you all of you have to search it you might have the answers also so this is uniform intervals means it is not stratified sampling it is called a systematic sampling so the answer over here is false again okay it is false got it everyone yeah. second next one as a general rule it is not necessary to include a finite population multiplier in computation for for a standard error the mean when the sampling size is greater than 50 okay let me change this let me make it when the sampling size is greater than 30 so now give me the answer as a general rule it is not necessary to include a finite population multiplier in computation for a standard error of a mean when the sample size is greater than 30 now tell me the answer yes it should be greater than true or false in the comment section i want the answer from everyone is it true or false yes it is it is true 30 is a true answer okay 30 is a true answer this is true it should be greater than 30 then the finite population multiplier is not required in that case okay so the minimum sample size is 30 for these cases okay so now 
before going ahead everyone let me tell you see this join our telegram channel and our youtube channel using this okay telegram and youtube channel both the channels you should join scan this qr code right now over here okay scan this qr code over here scan it and you can join our telegram plus youtube now what why should you join our youtube and telegram channel why why here the reason is in these channels you will be getting all the updates number one from uh, this iibf okay so what is the youtube channel officers under 24 7 youtube channel remember there are many fake channels also so that's why this qr code is given by scanning this qr code you can directly join the linkedin uh, this uh, telegram channel of this officers under 24 7 okay similarly for this youtube channel you can join this youtube channel also using this qr code okay so do it fast okay the probability distribution of the means of all the possible samples is known as sample distribution of the means is this true or false the probability this this question we are dealing with the probability distribution of the means of all the possible samples is known as the sample distribution of the means is it true or false everyone what is that true or false this see here what are we talking of probability distribution of the means of the samples so we are focusing on the word samples over here so whenever we are doing the probability distribution of any mean or mode or median anything or the samples it is known as sample distribution or it's called a sampling distribution that is the right word actually sampling but in exam they might give you sample also okay so this answer is again true okay this answer is again true got it next one the principles of simple random sampling are theoretical foundation of the statistical in, uh, inference what is this principles of simple random sampling so just now what did i tell you what are the four types of samplings one is simple random second is systematic third is uh, this uh, stratified and last one is this cluster right so which one is the best sampling base base you can call it base of any sampling techniques or base of statistics among these four which one is considered as a base everyone that will answer this question also the principles of simple random sampling are theoretical foundation of the statistical inference Suppose if I have to find any inference of any population, so for that I need to do the best method is simple random sampling. So that is true again, true. Remember, simple random sampling is the best sampling, okay, is the best sampling. All the remaining ones like cluster or this systematic or this uh, what uh, stratified, these come later, but basic is simple random sampling, okay. So those who are in the paid class, you might have already know. I have explained to you what is the systematic, simple, random, stratified. Okay. Those who are watching on YouTube, kindly join the paid classes, man, immediately, because there we have lot of time, isn't it? Next one. The standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means. See this we are dealing in. The standard error of the mean is a standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means. Is this true or false? Standard error of the mean I am talking of. Okay. So here we are talking of the mean. Uh, standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample means. So whenever I am talking of the mean over here, standard error means what? Standard error relates to samples. Okay. Remember one simple logic, for population we always use the word standard deviation and for this uh, what samples we always use the word standard error. So standard error of the mean is the standard deviation of distribution of the sample means. So standard error will relate to samples. This is again true. These are all information points for you. In exam, you might get such questions. Okay. True. 
next one the sampling plan that divides the population into well defined groups from which random samples are drawn is known as cluster sampling so is this known as cluster sampling a sampling plan that divides the population into well defined groups well defined well defined means they can be defined in any terms they can be defined in the in the terms of uh, region they can be defined in the terms of age they can be defined in the terms of marks okay or they can be defined like in systematic sampling they can be defined just by serial order so the sampling plan that divides the population into well defined groups for from which random samples are drawn is known as cluster sampling so is it true or false true or false is it true or false over here everyone it is true see this again true here i'll tell you one point over here even if this answer would have been instead of cluster the answer would have been like this let me i give you three four options over here if the answer would have been instead of cluster it would have been stratified then or uh, systematic then also the answer would have been correct see here well defined groups means what whatever is the is it given specifically that what type of well definition is it related to region see here i'll give you some uh, hints about this cluster will always relate to region always relate to region stratified will always relate to strata means uh, some groups common thing common thing percentages 40 to 60 percent 60 to 80 percent systematic will always relate to line all of you stand in one line and every 10th person come here so that is systematic so these are all well defined groups so the answer is true over here okay the standard error of the mean decreases with an increase in the sample size so as i go on increasing the sample size will the standard error decrease or will it increase as i go on increasing the sample size see increase in the sample size so will this standard error decrease or in increase what do you say true or false type fast in the comment section everyone yes so standard error of the mean decreases with an increase in the sample size true or false let me see Mm-hmm. Yes. It is true. That is the basic rule of sampling, right? That is the basic rule of sampling. So the standard error will decrease. What is standard error? Standard error is actually the difference between the population mean and the observed mean. Keep it very simple. so standard error is the difference between the population mean and the observed mean isn't it we have that formula z equals to 1 upon psi x bar standard error into x bar minus mu right so that formula is uh, is no uh, means that formula gives you x bar and mu the difference is this known as standard error okay to perform the complete enumeration what would one would need to examine every item in the population means to perform do some survey it's that simple suppose if i have to do some survey so will i have to survey each and every element of the um, of that uh, sample size means suppose if i have been told to find out the average salary in any city in delhi let's say i have been told to find out the average salary in delhi will i have to take the sample of each and every person in the delhi will i have to go to each and every house in delhi and ask them what is your salary what is this what is this some five six questions is it required to do the survey of each and every element not required isn't it 
what do we do what do we do in this we take some sample representative samples we'll take the samples in the four corners of the city isn't it four corners various corners of the city or some 10 samples from various corners of the city and then we'll find out the average uh, this uh, salary right so to perform the complete enumeration one would need to examine every item in the population so that is false okay you need not do the enumeration of each and every item of the uh, or do the survey of each and every element of that sample okay in everyday life we see many examples of infinite population of physical objects so do we see them we see many examples of infinite population of physical objects is it true or false infinite population do you, do you see them give me some example give me some example of physical objects infinite population type in the comment section everyone infinite population of physical objects okay i'll give you some example let me see how many of you have written yeah now let me see so it is okay can you tell me the number of uh, stars in the sky these are physical objects stars are physical objects do you know the number of stars in the sky no you don't know because they are infinite suppose if i give you 1 kg of sugar 1 kg of sugar and tell you to count each and every grain of that sugar each and every grain is it possible grain each and every grain not possible isn't it so these are all physical objects and infinite population we see many examples that is true we see so many examples right so that is true over here next one to obtain a theoretical sampling distribution we consider all the samples of the given size so see this to obtain a theoretical sampling distribution sampling distribution means what is the total number of samples taken how the samples are distributed this comes under the normal curve bell curve we call it we consider all the samples of the given size so do we consider all the samples or no all the samples are given so the answer is true yes we consider all the samples of the uh, given size so here sampling distribution if you have to take you have to consider all the samples whichever sample sampling you have done Okay, so the answer is true again. Got it? Let me see how many of you have answered this. Yeah. Next one. Larger samples are always a good idea because they decrease the standard error. So if I have the larger samples, will I will it decrease my standard error? Yes. They will decrease. Just now we saw it in one of the above questions. As the sample size increases, the standard error will decrease. So does it mean I must always go for larger samples? Is it true? What about the cost? Suppose if I am doing a sample survey of 50 persons versus I am doing the sample survey of 5000 persons. What will be the cost of 5000 persons? So it's not always a good idea. That is a false answer. It is not always a good idea because cost considerations are very important. In sampling, cost is very important part. Okay. Now, before going ahead, everyone subscribe to Officers Adda 24-7 YouTube channel. I gave you the link also. Uh, scan that uh, QR code. Okay. And subscribe to this channel immediately. Okay. So, in this channel, you are getting all the latest updates from IIBF. Plus, free YouTube series. Right now, what are you watching? You are watching the free YouTube series. So, you are getting that also. So that's why subscribe to it, click on the bell icon immediately. The mean of certain population was 15. Most of the samples we could take from that population would likely have a mean of 15. Is it true? See here, mean of a certain population was 15. So if the mean of certain population, suppose there is a city and I am having the average salary of that city is 15,000, let's say, okay. So the mean of the samples which I took from all the five corners of the city. So will the mean of those samples also be 15 or no? 
that is let me see okay let me see first from your side are you seeing through it is false false again okay? the answer is false over here why because it's not compulsory that the mean of the sample should be 15 only i'll give you an example suppose i'm having the samples here i took four surveys let's say four corners of the city and i got the average as means average of one was 10 second one was 20 okay third one was 15 and fourth one was let's say mm, let's say 17 okay okay and this i'll make it eight eight suppose if i got these four salaries eight thousand twenty thousand fifteen thousand and seventeen thousand now you do the addition of all these 20 plus 8 28 plus 15 33 right 33 then 43 43 then this 7 uh, 15 then 60 right so total i am getting it as 60 over here total is 60 do the average upon 4 what am i getting i am getting this as 15 so my population mean is coming out as 15 but was all were all the samples having the mean of 15 no so it's not compulsory that is the point i'm stressing so that is false the standard error the standard error of a sample statistic is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution so standard error of a sample statistic is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution that is true what did i say earlier sample standard error is same as the standard deviation so that is true over here okay so whatever we this other name for standard deviation is standard error in case of samples for population it is standard deviation judgment sam sampling has the disadvantage that it may lose some representativeness of the sample judgment sampling what is judgment sampling there are two types of sampling one is probability second is judgment so judgment sampling has a disadvantage that it may lose some representatives of the sample that is true because judgment is based on the individual judgment suppose if i am the judge i feel something is right but there may be other things which are uh, which are out of my purview or out of my thinking but they may also be right so that is true over here. next one the sampling fraction compares the size of the sample to the size of the population now this you must definitely tell me let me see you must definitely tell me this answer it should be yeah sampling fraction compare the size of the sample uh, size of of the sample to the size of the population so that is yeah it is true that is the meaning of this uh, sampling fraction okay that is true series from start till the end okay let's start the series banks basically banks are financial institutions okay let me get it from you because you all guys work in the bank what are the what are the banks what do you mean by banks bank does the job of bank is getting the deposits from somebody and lending it to someone simple getting the deposit from somebody and giving it uh, as a loan to somebody right so that is basically banking isn't it let me draw it over here for easier better to understand see this is a bank okay bank so what happens there is a depositor over here who deposits the money deposit then bank gives this amount as a loan to this guy loan how does the bank earn then this loan person will give the interest interest and this deposit person has given the interest so bank will again pay the interest to this guy interest only the difference is this interest over here this interest will be lesser let's say this interest is seven percent then this interest should be at least nine percent so that this gap of nine minus seven that is two percent 
that is known as NII, net interest income. Okay, this is known as NII. Remember, it's not NIM. NIM is different. NIM equals to NIM, net interest margin. Remember, by heart these two, you'll be getting one at least in the exam. NII upon yielding assets, they call it. Or you just write it assets. It's actually yielding assets. Yielding means which are performing assets, which are giving you the returns. So coming back, banks are financial institutions that perform deposit and lending function, obviously. Okay. There are various types of banks in India and each is responsible for different, uh, perform different functions. So what are the various banks in India? One is central bank. Central bank means RBI over here. RBI. Okay. It's not Central Bank of India. It is RBI. Second, cooperative banks, commercial banks, RRBs, local area banks, specialized banks, small finance banks, and payment banks. Now, if you see this, these are all how many? 3 plus 3, 6 plus 2, 8. Right? 8 types of banks. Plus, there are others which are not added over here. Mm, investment bank. Okay, investment bank is not added over here because that's a totally different feature. But then also it's a part of banking. Okay, so that is one part. What are the what is bank and what are the types of banks? Now, importantly, which is asked to you in exam is RRB. They always ask you about RRB because RRBs are actually nationalized banks as of now. Okay, these are special types of commercial banks that provide concessional credit to agriculture and rural sector. Concessional credit. Remember, concessional credit to agri and rural sector. Okay. So, these banks, these are special. See, here, name itself, what does it say? Rural. Regional. Regional means related to that region only. So, concessional credit to agri and rural sector. RRBs were established in 1975 under the registration, uh, registered under the RRB Act 1976. Remember, this act is of 1976 and bank is in 1975. Remember, these two years are reverse. Huh? Generally, in case what happens, act is first and banks are later. Like in RBI Act, 1934 Act and then bank in 1935. But here it's reverse. That's why this is important. RRBs are joint ventures between central government, state government and commercial banks. Now, what is this? This uh, It means any RRB which is formed, 50% of the funds or the capital is from the central government. So, state government has 15% of the capital and commercial bank. Now, commercial bank, this is known as the sponsor bank. Sponsor. Okay. This sponsor bank holds 35% of the equity of this RRB. In fact, that is a fight going on right now. See, from your exam point of view, remember, this is the structure. Central government 50, state government 15 and commercial bank 35. Right now what is happening? Government is coming up with a thought process that why should these be kept it this way only? Can't these RRBs be a separate bank? Separate bank altogether. No sponsor bank. Can't these work like this? All the RRBs can be combined in India. So this is a thought process. But from exam point of view, remember, Central government, state government, commercial uh, bank, and this is these are the proportion. Okay. Everyone download Adda 24/7 app on your mobile, and in this app you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes, ebooks, tests, whatever we require for clearing our JIB as well as CIB. You'll be getting it over here. So that's why download it right now. Now let's go to the question part. And what did I tell you? Some part I'll be covering two slides here, and then I'll be going to the questions. Today we'll be covering some basic questions which we forget. We take it for granted that we know, but we we don't know. So that's why we'll we'll be focusing on that. Bank passbook is issued by the bank, contains the transaction details of the bank account, shows the balance in the account, and all of the above. So what is the bank passbook? Issued by the bank, correct? Now, this is, these are simple questions. Let me get the answers fast from you. Because if these simple, we are not able to answer. How will we answer the difficult ones? So, the answer over here is A, B, C or D. It is D, all of the above, right? Bank passbook is having all these three features. Okay? Bank pays interest on deposits, loans, both A and B. So, bank pays interest. Remember, pays interest on what? 
pays pays interest on deposit remember deposit simple isn't it next one bank charges the interest on so bank charges interest on deposits loans both a and b none of the above is also so close it right just now i told you subscribe to officers at that 24/7 youtube channel in this channel you will be getting the latest updates on jib and cib and importantly you will be getting free youtube series okay so uh, definitely subscribe how to join this join our uh, through our this uh, instagram channel you can join plus youtube channel plus this telegram channel you can scan the qr codes given below and uh, you can call on the numbers given see this right side number is given now a bit difficult one now earlier one were simple now difficult one education loans they cover what tuition fees and expenses are repayable after completion of the course granted for studies in india and abroad and all of the above now see here b is correct c is correct but what about a does education loan cover tuition fees and expenses other expenses you can call it other okay other does it cover the hostel fees does the education loan cover my um, daily expenses for staying there my food expenses or does it cover only tuition fees so the correct answer is that's why i said now we'll be covering coming to the difficult part it is d are repayable after completion of the course means what see here education loan how it, how is it given suppose if i give that education loan today today okay so this guy will be requiring guy or girl right? it's not a gender bias so this guy or girl will be requiring at least let's say that person is doing engineering okay so that person will require around 4 years so 4 years gone over here up to 4 years this person won't this student won't be able to pay any interest on uh, interest on this or any emi on this so what do we do this is known as a this moratorium period in this moratorium period the student is allowed not to pay any interest or principal on this but does it mean that we have waived it off that oh no forget it you won't pay at all no this is paid but later after completion of the course then we give still one year more one year for job right after this job this, then your emi starts so here what happens you whatever is pending for these four plus and five years these five years whatever this interest is that is taken from that student bank see here after all it's not bank's money it's the depositor's money so we are just the trustee how can we waive off any amount okay so that's why it's payable or repayable after completion of the course and obviously granted for studies in india and abroad that's obvious isn't it business correspondent means now that's why i said difficult level questions are coming up business correspondent means what is a business correspondent you all have dcs now in your banks here nationalized banks have nationalized i'll just write n over here and second is private banks t okay private oh let me write it only here because what happens n and p doesn't signify anything nationalized and second is private okay let's keep this private so nationalized banks have what they have nationalized banks have dcs business correspond these are private agencies basically similarly private and uh, this private banks have what similar to bcs they have what there is one word again okay. what is that word called as private banks we have these cases going on against all these guys right yeah dsa right dsa dsa right direct sales agents selling agent sales agents this bcs business, business correspondent so business correspondent means what an agent who provides banking service an agent of the business house a type of money lender and none of the above so who is this mm -mm -mm -mm. yes 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 it is a obviously isn't it it's a who provides banking service here bc is always appointed in those areas where the bank doesn't have the reach doesn't have the reach does not reach means let's say there is a a small village of how many 20 houses there are many villages huh, which are 20 houses 30 houses 50 houses the population is hardly 200 300 400 max can you set up a branch over there 
with the 500 population. You can't. Because if you set up a branch with 500 population over there, what will be the cost? Your salary is, your running expenses, electricity and all this coming and going of the, because the employees won't be living in that village, right? They won't be staying in that village. They'll be staying in the nearby cities, right? So coming and going, so what will be the cost? So that's why, what do we do? We don't uh, open the branch over there. We open a BC over there, business correspondent, private agency. Somebody from that uh, village itself will provide the banking services, okay? Internet banking refers to operation of account through internet, opening of account through app, or both A and B. Now, what do you think, guys? Let me see. Is it both A and B or only A? Operation of account through internet means I'm having an account with you and I can deposit the money, withdraw the money, transfer the money, check the balances. I can do this. So operation means that. But can I open the account through app now? What do you say? I can, right? The answer is C, both A and B. Remember, internet banking refers to all. Who can open the savings account in India? Indian citizen, NRI, illiterate, all of the above. Hmm. Savings account. <coughs> Who can open the savings account? Savings account can be opened by Indian citizen. When it when the Indian citizen opens, it is called as what? Resident Savings Banks Account, RSB. Resident Savings Banks Account. Okay. When an NRI opens the savings account, it can be two types, NRO or NRE. Both are allowed. Okay. NRO and NRE. Non-resident external and non-resident ordinary. Okay, both these are non-resident accounts. Illiterate, yes, obviously. That is RSB only. Resident savings banks. Okay. So anyone can open the savings account. Any eligible person. Can a child open the savings account? So the, okay, let me get the answer over here. The answer is D. Okay. Can a child open the savings account? Child, give me the answer by the time we I'll move on to the next question. Can a child open the savings account? Yes. Yes. We have this uh, minor uh, minor guardian, right? About 10 years, the child can open it solely without any guardian. About 10 years, okay? Shall I move on? PAN number is required for what? Deposits less than 50,000, deposit in excess of 1 lakh, deposit of 50,000 and above in a single day, all of the transactions. What is the answer? PAN number is required for? What is the correct answer? See, this is the correct answer for any deposit above 50,000 in a single day. Remember this, single day means, suppose if I deposit 10,000 now, then I deposit again 20,000 after some time, then again 30,000 after some time, so then I'll be requiring the PAN, okay? So in a single day, got it? TDS as per income tax means TDS. What is TDS? Time deposit scheme, ta total deposit scheme, tax deducted at source and none of the above. TDS means? Yes. Tax deducted at source. This is the advance tax which is paid by you and me. And we get a refund of this, right? Those who, how many of you file the income tax returns? File the, no, I'm not talking of form 16. I'm talking of income tax returns. How many of you are filing? So if you are filing the income tax returns, you'll definitely get the returns, a refund. But if you are not filing the income tax returns, you are losing all that money. Because whatever TDS is deducted, you should get the refund. If your income level is be below, the obviously after below that, okay? Maximum amount of check in the bank is, so what is the maximum amount of check I can write? Tomorrow if I write a check to you of let's say 1 lakh crore. Suppose if I write a check like this, 1 lakh crore to you, obviously, if I have the balance. I don't have that much balance, neither you have, okay? But if, can I write the check of this amount? 100 crore, no limit, 1 crore, none of the above. I can write, isn't it? No limit. I can write any amount of check. Okay. Maximum minimum is also there. I can write a 50 paise check also. 50 paise. I can write a 50 paise check to you. 
okay as per the rbi guideline generally the loan to value ratio in case of home loans is what is the home loan ratio of loan to uh, um, loan to value what is this loan to value ratio it means what suppose if my house which i am purchasing house okay if that house is for let's say 50 lakhs okay so how much loan can be given by the bank Will the bank give complete 50 lakhs or will the bank give around 75% or will the bank give 80% or 90% or 100%? So how much loan will be given by the bank? So that is known as loan to value ratio. So is it 90, 80, 75 or depending on the value of the loan? What is the answer? Type fast in the comment section. Everyone type fast. Let me see. Yes. What is it? Yeah, it is correct. See this. Correct. Depending on the loan value. Depending on the value, bank has to take their own call. Okay. RBI has given certain guidelines. Okay. Up to 30 lakhs, you can give up to 90%. 30 to 75 lakhs, you can give up to 85%. Above 75 lakhs, you can give up to 75%. So, but Again, RBI has said that although these are the guidelines, but these are not the compartments, tight compartments. You have to decide on your own. So depending on the loan value is the right answer. The loan to value ratio, if the home loan is up to dash, can be 90%. So up to 90%, up to what home, uh, what percentage can I give the home loan? What amount can I give the home loan? Just now I gave you. So in this case, it will be loan to value ratio in case of Loans up to dash can be 90% as per RBI guidelines. As per RBI guidelines, it is 25 lakhs. Okay, because the RBI says up to 30 lakhs, you can give 90%. Okay, got it clear? Everyone, now to join our this uh, Telegram channel or YouTube channel or the Instagram channel, you can scan this QR code. Just pause this video and scan the QR code right now. In this Telegram channel or this YouTube channel or this uh, Instagram channel, you will get all the updates from JIB, uh, for JIB and CIB from IIBF number one. Plus, you are getting free YouTube series, your free questions on all the channels. Okay, what is here? Right now, what are you watching? You are watching free YouTube series, right? Similarly, all the YouTube series free for various subjects. You get it on this YouTube channel. Okay. So you can get it over here. The links you can get it in the Telegram channel. The same you can get it in this Instagram channel. So scan this. See this QR code. This blue one is for Insta. Uh, sorry, Telegram. This uh, this is for this um, YouTube. And this is for Instagram. So join it. Uh, all the three channels I would suggest. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube, click on the bell icon, share it with your friends because very important here, sharing is caring, okay? In retail banking, the dash is the beginning of the beginning point of the marketing process. So, which is the beginning point? Beginning point in the sense, suppose if I have, if I'm having good relationships with you, means I'm the banker, okay? I'm having two good relationships with you. I'm... We all are, we both are dealing with each other every day. Now the problem is, you require the loan. Or let's say you require a loan against securities. Okay. But my bank doesn't have the uh, loan against securities. Okay. Let me give you this, write it over here. Here, I, you are the customer, I am the bank. Okay. And you are the customer. Customer. And you require less. The LAS is one of the important products, huh? LAS, loan against securities. So bank is to provide LAS to you. You are having many shares with you. And those shares you want to keep collateral with you. See the shares will be, shares are kept collateral with the bank. And the bank gives the loan on these shares, okay? But if I don't have this loan, then is it of any use myself and yourself maintaining good relationships with each other? Ultimately, what we'll say, sir, you'll come once or twice to me. That, sir, uh, I require this bank, this loan. And two times I'll say I'm speaking to my head office whether we can give it, and I don't give it. 
what will ha what will happen? You will ultimately run to the next bank, B2, right? Another bank you will go to. Why? Because I am not having that product. So in retail banking, the dash is the beginning point of the marketing process. Product development, product selling, product and a customer. So which is the beginning point? Just now I gave you the hint. Yeah, which is the beginning point? If I don't have the product, will you stay with me? Let it be myself, the very good service, every, everything is good given by me. Will you stay with me? No, right? So that's why product is the beginning point of all your marketing process. Product, okay? Hi friends, welcome to Adda 24-7. We are in the Achiever series for JIB. Here we are covering all the important objective questions as well as important theories and some numericals as well, whenever they arise. Okay. So let's start without wasting the time. The moratorium period, now the numbers you will see, the numbers we have, we have been covering it since many days as such. That's why these numbers are continuous. Okay. So what, that's why I'm saying watch the series till from the starting. The moratorium period in case of personal loans is so in case of personal loans, what is the moratorium period? Here. What do you think is should be the moratorium period in, in terms of personal loan? It is always one month, two months, three months, six months. Personal loan. Personal loan means how many of you, you have worked in loans? How many of you have worked in loans? Just type yes in the comment section. Loan section. Those who have worked in the loan section, they will understand it. That for PLs, we don't give any moratorium. No moratorium. Then where is the answer? No moratorium. Period. When the answer is no moratorium period over here, what are you actually saying? You are saying one month moratorium period. Why? Because after the disbursement, it takes one month for the, the for the person borrower to pay the EMI, isn't it? So that's why personal loans will have one one month moratorium period. Okay, got it? One month moratorium period. Next one. Personal loans are repayable in a period of yeah. They are repayable in the period of what? What do you say, guys? 12 months, 24 months, 36 months, 48 months. Generally, I am talking of generally. Now, there can be any bank can give the personal loans for 5 years also. Maximum loans allowed for the banks are 10 years, right? So, some bank can say that, okay, I will give it for 10 years. That's not an issue. But generally, 90% banks, how long do they give the PLs? They give the PLs for? What do you say guys? They give the PLs for 36 months. Okay, 36 months. Always remember, PLs are always given generally for 3 years. Okay. Do we take any security on personal loans? Type in the comment section. Do we take any security? Is it compulsory for us to take any security for the personal loans? What do you say? Is it compulsory? No, not at all compulsory. Okay. You can just give the personal loan like that only, without any security. Some banks do ask for some FD, some bike, some car, something uh, as a collateral. But that depends on bank to bank and depends on that score of that customer, credit score. Okay. Chal, next one. For repayment of personal loans, banks obtain dash for payment on the due date. So, what do the banks obtain? Payment on the due date, huh? due date. On the due date, the customer should pay. Means every month we have that EMI date, right? So, for that date, what do the what do the banks take? Authority letter to debit a deposit account. FDR as a security for the loan. Post-dated checks, and any of the above. I know all of you will get confused over here between A and C now because B everyone knows B is not a, uh, something which is taken for uh, the due date point. Okay, FDR is taken as a security. That security has nothing to do with payment on the due date. All of you will get confused between A and C. 
because you feel both of them are right. A is also right, C is also right. So what does the bank take now? Now I am talking. In this present age of computers, internet, UPI, everywhere, what do we take? Do we take these PDCs now? How many of you do take PDCs now from the customer? Type yes in the comment section if you take PDCs. One or three PDFs we take up till now for that negotiable instruments act. But for the regular repayment, 12 PDCs, 36 PDCs, do we take it? Gone. All those days are gone now. Directly authority letter. That also we call it SI now, right? Standing instruction. Authority letter means SI. So we take SI only. That is the only point, isn't it? Because nowadays all these things are gone. PDCs and all these things. Everything gone. Okay? Next one. The disbursement of a personal loan is generally in one go, in the period of one or two months, in installments, any of the above at the bank's discretion. So personal loan is disbursed how? In one go. Or uh, one go means what? Single, single installment. Means single, single year. So if you want a loan of four or five lakhs, I'll give you five lakhs immediately. Or will I give it in two months, one or two months? Oh, this month one lakh, next month one lakh. In installments, every month I'll be giving you 50, 50,000. Do I give it like this? At the bank's discretion? How does the bank generally give this loan? It's always given at A, in one go. Personal loans are always given in one go. Okay. Now you'll say, sir, personal loans one go, that's okay. See, at the question over here is generally how is it given? 90% appears here. It's after all at the discretion of the bank. Bank can sometimes tell you that, okay, one month, this month I'm giving you this much, next month I'll be giving you whenever you require it. But generally what happens, personal loan is for what? Personal loan is for the personal requirements. And for that, the human being or that customer has applied, right? So if the customer has applied for some urgent work, that person is needed exactly the full amount for that urgent work. So that's why it's always disbursed in one go. Okay. Next one. One. The term demographic dividend is used in Indian context with reference to I mean, demographic dividend. What do you mean by this word dividend? Dividend means basically advantage. So demographic advantage to India is in what terms now? Who can tell me? Demographic dividend is in India is in is for what terms? Advantage of largest number of qualified persons. Qualified. Do we have too many qualified persons? Advantage of highest number of young persons. Do we have young persons? Advantage of highest number of software development firms. Do we have that? Advantage of all of the above. All of the above. What do you think is the answer? Yeah. Type fast in the comment section. Qualified, young or software. It is B. Highest number of young people. That is the right answer. Advantage of highest number of wrong, young people. That is the correct answer. Because India has a high demographic dividend of young persons. Do you know which country is aging now? Aging. Aging means all of them are getting old. Japan, correct. Japan is aging. Second, China is coming up in the same line. China is also aging now. Okay. So that is the biggest disadvantage to these countries. Next one. For education loans, bank takes the following. So banks take what? Banks follow. Policy prescribed by Ministry of HRD. Policy details formulated by RBI. Model education loan scheme by IBA. The own policy framed by them without taking into account any instruction from RBI or government of R or IBA. What is the answer? Means education loan, which policy is forward? This policy is given by a certain, dip, a certain institution. Which is that institution? That is the right, right question over here. HRD, Ministry of HRD, RBI, IBA or their own 
forget everything RBI, forget this government, I'll do my whatever I want. Is it that deep? What is the answer, everyone? What is the answer? It is IBA. Remember this. For education loans, banks follow the model education loan scheme of IBA. IBA has devised this scheme. Okay? Everyone, before going ahead, download Adda 24-7 app on your mobile. In this app, you will be getting the premium study material plus live classes, ebooks, tests, whatever we require for clearing JIB and CIB, you will get it over here. So that's why download it right now. Okay? Do, don't just download it. Otherwise, I'll, I'll tell you many, how many apps. Okay, let me ask you one question. In your own mobile, how many apps do you have? Do you know the number at least? How many number of apps you have? Type yes or no. I know many of the answers are no over here because I myself don't know how many apps are there in my mobile. We just download it and keep it. Saying that, oh, we'll use it sometime. Don't do that. This is the main bread and butter. Daily, it's like breathing in and breathing out. That much important this app is for you. Download it and use it. In this app, Adda 24-7 app, you will be getting premium study materials, everything that is there. Free tests, free ebooks. Some part of the ebooks are given free. Free lectures are also given. So whatever is free, grab it, download it immediately. Okay? Next one, move on. So for education loan, education loan is available generally to which of the following? School students, professional and other college students, only university level students and any of the above. So whom is the education loan available now? Who gets the education loan? Let me see. Yes, 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 yes. Who gets the education loan? School students? Have you seen any schools getting the education loan? I think so within some years they will also require it because the school fees are so huge now, isn't it? Look at the primary school fees in the private schools. They are around 2 and in metro cities they are around 4 to 5 lakhs. Metros. Many of you might be say, staying in metros, you might be seeing those private school fees. In tier 2 cities, they are around 1 and, a, one and a half lakhs. So the right answer for this is what? This is this. Professional and college students. Other college students. Okay. So education loan is given to these guys. Professional and other college students. Only university level students. That's not the right answer. Okay. It can be to professionals also. Means CAs. They are also given the education loan. Okay. In case of education loans, who is made a co-borrower? See, your education loan is given to whom? Tell me first. It is always given to that student. Actually, the borrower is that student. But what happens? We don't, the student is not earning at that time. That's why we don't give that person, that student, that much, uh, that amount. We give, we take some co-borrower. So whom do we take the co-borrower? The college where the student takes the admission. My God. College where the student takes the admission. This college will go bankrupt. There are 1200, let's say 1000 students in any college. Suppose college becomes the <laughs> co borrower to these students. College will go bankrupt, right? So that is out. Family member of the members of the borrower, the parents of the borrower, friends and relatives of the borrower, near and dear ones. See this B, C, and D. All of them are similar answers. Or what is the correct answer then? Correct answer is this. Parents. Parents of the borrower means this student. Parents of the student are taken as the co-borrowers. Always remember this. But remember generally what happens. The parents are taken as co-borrower. But what is the logic of this education loan? Suppose if I take the education loan. I am the student. Let's say. Okay. So I am going for let's say engineering. So in engineering, first year means I'll take the admission and then um, when will I repay the loan and who will repay the loan? Suppose if my parents are taken as the co-borrower, okay? 
then what is expected from that loan? Who should repay that loan? Should the parents repay it or should the student repay it? What do you think, guys? What is expected from that loan? It is expected that the student should complete the course and repay the loan by joining the job or doing some business, anything. So that is the logic behind it. Student should repay. But what happens, we take parents as a co-borrower. Why? Because if the student doesn't get a job immediately, if the student fails, then what? The loan is to be repaid in any case. So that repayment will be done by this co-borrower as a parent. Okay. The amount of education loans is restricted to dash for studies in India. So in India, what is the maximum amount of education loan? 5 lakh, 7.5 lakh, 10 lakh, 20 lakh. Now this is a simple answer. Okay? What is the answer over here? Education loans in India. In India. Immediately I'll be asking you abroad also. Next question is abroad. So this is what is the answer over here? Hmm? It is? 10 lakhs education loans in India are restricted to 10 lakhs okay similarly next one see here before going ahead see here uh, or join the officers at that 24 7 YouTube channel in this channel now how to join it first I'll give you two points over here firstly why should you join it second is how should you join it okay firstly if you want to join this officers at that 24 7 YouTube channel why should you join it you should join it because there are number one free YouTube series on all the subjects of JIB and CIB free free okay so join it as a whatever is free grab it fast in YouTube series you are seeing similar see here what are you watching right now right now you are watching the free YouTube series this 2000 question series right similarly you get it for all the subjects of JIB as well as for CIB so that's why you should join it fast and free and freely grab it isn't it second one how how do you join this? Scan this QR code. See this QR code given over here. Scan it. Firstly, is this blue link blue QR code is for your uh, Telegram channel. Secondly, this this QR code black one is for your YouTube channel. Scan it immediately. Okay. Thirdly, this is the next Instagram uh, QR code. Let me show you. See this Instagram QR code. So scan this also. You'll get it over here. Instagram QR code. Okay, are you able to see this? Let me see. Yeah, you are able to see this. So, this Instagram QR code also. Scan it immediately. Even the links are available below in the description box also. You can join through that also. Okay, join it immediately because I've told you why is it important to join. Got it? Next one. The amount of education loan is restricted to rupees dash for studies abroad. Just now I told you 10 lakhs for, for India. So abroad will be what? It will be lesser, 7.5 lakhs. It will be 5 lakhs. Or it will, will it be 10 lakhs? If India I am giving it, within India I am giving it for 10 lakhs. Abroad will be definitely higher, isn't it? Logical. So the answer will be 20 lakhs over here. Isn't it? Answer is 20 lakhs. Got it? Next one. For education loans up to 4 lakhs, which of the following type of security is available? 4 lakhs, loan up to 4 lakhs, education loan. What is the security taken? Parents are co-borrowers. Parents are co-borrowers plus third party. Okay. So parents are co-borrowers plus third party. Third party guarantor. Third party guarantor means someone else. Some known person as a guarantor. Then parents as, as co-borrower plus charge on tangible assets like property, house. Give you a house as a collateral for four lakhs, is it? Parents and co as co-borrowers plus all of these now charge on tang tangible plus third party all of this. So D is what basically all of this. So for four lakhs, what the what will the bank take? Remember, four lakhs is not a big amount now for banking. Okay, earlier few years back, 20, 25 years back, it was a big amount. Now nothing. Just parents as co-borrowers and the loan is disbursed up to 4 lakhs. Okay. Nowadays loans are disbursed up to 10 lakhs based on civil. Just civil. No documentation. Zero documentation based on 
only based on civil. So in which world are we? Right? Next one. For loans above 4 lakhs and up to 7.5 lakhs, banks insist on what? Suppose above 4 lakhs. Just now we saw up to 4 lakhs, only parents. So 4 to 7 is what? This uh, co borrowers plus third party guarantor. Third party guarantor. Then co borrowers plus parents as co borrowers plus house tangible assets. Then uh, D is all of the above again. So what is the right answer over here? 4 to 7.5 lakhs. For 4 to 7.5 lakhs it is D. Third party guarantor. Only this much. Parents plus third party. That also banks have required that well that's why rbi doesn't say anything about this now okay means uh, now the restrictions are removed for all banks have to take their own risks okay so but see here for your jib purpose be specific about this you have to clear your jib exam up to 4 lakhs only parents is over 4 to 7.5 lakhs third party guarantee plus parents okay and next one this is the next one for loans Above 7.5 lakhs, banks is insist on what? Above 7.5. Okay. So above 7.5 lakhs, banks insist on all D. Now see here, answers are same. Co-borrowers, parents, then third party guarantee, charge on tangible assets, and all of these. So banks insist on what? For 7.5 lakhs. Above 7.5 lakhs. Banks take securities. Okay. Securities are taken. Okay. So co borrower plus fixed assets. Got it? Yeah. Chala. Move on. The education loan is generally disbursed by, by banks in one go, semester wise, annual payment installment only, semester wise, or annual payment installment. So, how is the education loan given to the students? One go. I take the admission right now and immediately it is given for all the four years. No. Semester wise, yes, it can be. Annually, it can be. So the answer is this. Semester wise or annual pattern as agreed as per the terms and conditions of that university. That is important. As per the terms and conditions of that university. Okay. I think so. Last one. So. The repayment of education loan is generally in 36 EMI, 48 EMI, 60 EMI, 84 EMI. What is it? Education loan repayment. 84 EMI? Many of you are typing 84 EMI. 84, not, not 84. 60 EMI. That is the right answer. 60 EMI. Only the point is this 60 EMI will start after the course is completed and after that one year. More one year is given generally depending on the job okay so more one year after that this six month this uh, five years will start hi friends welcome to adda 24 7 we are in the achiever series for rbw here we are covering all the all the important theory numericals and objective questions okay so without wasting the time let's start okay follow the series till the end everyone because this series is very important and we cover important numericals objective questions remember numericals and objective questions are the base of any jib or both cib exam nowadays okay so let's start okay let's move on we'll be covering the objective questions so first one Bank aims to keep a product more at a dash stage of the PLC, product life cycle, so as to maximize the business and the profit. Hmm, what is this? Okay, I'll give you the simple logic of PLC, product life cycle. Look at this. This is, this is your basically graph. Okay. And the product life cycle moves like this. Okay. So this is the introduction phase, this is against time and this is sales, okay, sales. So this is introduction, introduction, intro, 
then this is growth growth okay then this one this one over here is maturity and last one is decline this part is decline okay i'll write it over here decline okay so this is the basic plc product life cycle introduction of the product growth of the product maturity of the product and decline okay so here if you note see the sales over here are less lower part the sales is over here and in growth phase the sales is going on increasing and maturity phase the growth the sales is over here at the peak and this decline the sales is going down over here now you tell me if you are the owner of any company where will you try, try to keep the you know, your product of the plc will you try to keep it over here okay i'll give you two options only these four there are four options introduction growth maturity decline i'll give you only two growth or maturity decline of course you want introduction of course you want right so now the question comes growth or maturity in growth you see there is something advantage what is that advantage sales is going on growing and at maturity it is at a peak so what will you try in the comment section give me the answer b or c b or c everyone in the comment section b or c yeah it is b or c the answer is c many of you have typed b but the answer is c why okay i'll ask you a simple question see this let's say this sales is 100 over here okay and this sales is somewhere let's say this only this is going on increasing but this is what this will be less than 100 so if i am the owner of any company i'll try to make my sales at what i'll my, try to make my sales over here 100 because i want maximum money so I'll always try to keep my product at this phase, not here, not here, nowhere, only at the maturity phase, right? Next, which of the following statements regarding the product life cycle is not correct? Not. You want the wrong one now. So what are the options? Product life cycle is different for different products. Okay, we'll study one by one. Each product goes through all the stages in the product life cycle, namely introduction, growth, this is growth, growth, maturity and decline. Some products have death immediately after the introduction. In some cases, the maturity stage may be very short. So which one is not correct? You want not correct now. So let's look at one by one. Product life cycle is different for each and every product. Different products, it is different. Obviously, it is different. Products life cycle for nowadays in this uh, present era of startups, the product life cycle is totally different. Products move very fast. Whereas a PLC for your earlier products like FMCG, okay, FMCG, Hindustan liver products, that is different, that is slow. So PLC is different for each and every product that is true. So I'll write it here true. I want false answer. Okay. What do I want? False. Each product goes through all the stages in the PLC. So each product goes through all the stages. Is it so? All the stages. Let's see it later. Some products have death immediately after introduction. Means introduction, growth, maturity, decline, death immediately. So introduction from introduction it moves directly to decline or death you can call it okay introduction to this growth and maturity is not there is it so this happens okay this happens many products have gone to immediately death after introduction many products have gone okay means any example type in the comment section what example do you know about that product which has which was introduced and it went immediately down what was that product? Any product you remember? Any, any, any? Yes. Immediately it went down. Okay. There were. Okay. So, introduction to death. 
there were many products in fact uh, i'll tell you regarding the wallet system wallet wallet system was introduced and it didn't grow at all you'll say paytm but paytm has grown has grown differently paytm grew when it directly connected its uh, account to the merchant's account and immediately the credit was shown wallet means the money has to be kept in that wallet for some time and then the money is given to that customer so that's why this pro wallet product went immediately down some of the companies came other than paytm also but they were down in some cases maturity stage may be very short obviously maturity sh stage is short in some of the stages some products okay some products move like this the plc is like this it will be it will move like this and immediately down here immediately at a single point nowadays in this present age in the fast age now the maturity is very uh, very means uh, short over here okay now let's look at the b answer each product has to grow so this is also true and this is also true now look at this this is false why because all the products have to go through all the stages it's not compulsory some products whenever they are introduced they immediately go to the maturity phase some products go directly to the decline phase okay so this is false so the answer is b over here b not true is b okay the core products the core products have longer life cycle and uh, life cycle period these products include which of the following so core products what are the core products longer life cycle they always keep on growing savings cash credit and credit card current account recurring account add on life insurance savings current and term deposit and all of the above so what is the correct answer in this core product now i want a core product from your side which one is a core product yeah which are the core products think over it everyone answer in the comment section yeah core product of the banking system are saving current and fd these are the core products saving current and fd these are the core products of any banking system okay they will always have a long term growth or long term life okay they will never have a short life or decline immediately i can add one more product to this i can add two products to this these are all of deposits i can add two more products that is cc and term loan term loan okay so these two products can also be added you will say sir then it was there in a also but a had a credit card credit card is not a core product of the bank okay at least now future we don't know future it may become the core product right now it's not there okay so add on life add on life is not a core product of the bank so saving current term deposit cc and term loan you can add these also in the asset on the asset side got it which of the following was an augmented product earlier but it is now a, become a core product so augmented means what what is the okay what are the types of products what are the types of products yeah who can type in the comment section what are the types of products in the comment section everyone yeah type yes first is core products core product second is second is augmented product right yeah core product then second is augmented product after augmented product then what yes comment section everyone comment section we have core in fact we have two more in between but we generally don't talk of it okay i'll give you the sequence only see the sequence is like this core core then afterwards uh, the core product it becomes generic there are two more means one more in between but we generally uh, focus on core augmented and potential then expected then last next one is augmented 
and last one is potential so these are the five levels of products okay potential so these are the five levels of the products so which of the following was an augmented augmented means what some very surprising or very interesting product means for example uh, 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 let me see if any other example is there ATM card current account cash credit okay okay first you answer then I'll give you the answer savings bank account ATM card current account and cash credit it was a surprise earlier but now it has become a generic product correct it is comment section ATM card nowadays we don't call it ATM card it is debit card now right ATM card and debit card there is a difference ATM card means there was uh, the card introduced earlier when the private banking came from 95 to 2005 I myself sold ATM cards ATM card was available for free debit card was chargeable so debit card you can do the shopping in ATM card you can't do the shopping but nowadays ATM cards are gone nobody issues ATM cards now it's all debit cards okay so this was an augmented product earlier means it was a surprise element for the customers 10 20 years back oh debit card my god I can purchase this I can purchase that I can shop now what is this debit card people have stopped using the debit card now right there is no debit card being used because of this UPI so this debit card is on the stage of what if you look and draw this PLC so if this debit card is over here decline people are not using debit cards now so even for purchase even for even your ATMs uh, are without the debit cards nowadays right cardless withdrawals are allowed so that's why it's on the decline stage but the answer to this question was it was a augmented product earlier oh surprise element but now it has become a core product this so that is debit card the products that are developed from formal products by combining two or more uh, two core products and adding the value to the products is called as two products are combined okay and then uh, means basically two products are combined so value is automatically added later are called as what augmented derivative uh, base core products and supplementary products so what are these known as those products are combined from the two products and then something more masala is added to it masala you can call it okay so that is known as two core products means I'll give you a simple example suppose I will give you an FD FD so that is a core product okay but if if I give you FD OD so that becomes your augmented because FD now you can use this as a current account also means for you daily purposes so two core products com combination okay so that is a basic uh, example of this means two core products are added so that answer for this is what it is called as augmented product augment means what combining these two and adding the masala okay so adding value means adding masala okay type one or two more core product core products which have been combined everyone type any two core products which have been combined to form the third one any any two I'll give you one more savings account nowadays has been combined with the health insurance policies health insurance is given free on the savings account why because of course competition right so that is the basic thing nowadays one more I'll give you home loans whenever you buy the home loans immediately consumer loan is given to you you get a home loan and immediately the bank gives the consumer loan why because it's an augmented they know you will buy a new house you are buying a new house so you will definitely need new refrigerator new tele new television new something new that thing so that's why this is this is a combination of the two core products okay a savings bank account is offered with the internet banking facility a mobile banking facility and a group health or life insurance product it has become a core product semi core augmented and semi augmented now this is simple for you you must be able to answer this just now I gave you the uh, meaning of the products so what is that called as two or more products combined so these two savings account is combined with what internet banking see this internet banking is a separate product remember this internet banking 
मोबाइल बैंकिंग इट्स अ सेपरेट प्रोडक्ट इंश्योरेंस प्रोडक्ट इंश्योरेंस पॉलिसी दैट्स अ सेपरेट प्रोडक्ट सो नाउ यू आर कंबाइनिंग दीज विद द सेविंग्स अकाउंट सो इट हैज ऑटोमेटिकली बिकम व्हाट ऑगमेंटेड इज इट इट ऑगमेंटेड गॉट इट एवरीवन दिस हैज ऑटोमेटिकली बिकम द ऑगमेंटेड प्रोडक्ट नेक्स्ट वन वन सेकंड या Which of the following can be defined as a combination deposit? Now this is again the sort of that only combination deposit. Casa deposit means augmented sort, a reinvestment FD, a recurring deposit, a recurring deposit, come fixed deposit. What is all this? Combination, combination deposit. Casa, combination means current account and saving account. It's a combination. These two accounts are separate. Although we call it casa, but ka is separate and sa is separate. You can't combine current account and savings account. Okay, keep it very simple. Current account is for business, savings account is for personal level. Okay, reinvestment plan FD. It's again a single FD only. It can be reinvested. Means reinvestment plan means what? At the maturity, what should I do? Once the FD matures, what should I do? Should I be reinvest or should I take it to my savings account? so that is a simple fd it's not a combination okay recurring deposit a common recurring deposit taking this and then uh, using means uh, every month i'll take it put it some amount and then i'll make a fd of this now recurring come fd now what is this this is a combination combination means what any two again we go back to that core product level means augmented product level okay similar to that only that's why i have taken this question over here similar to that i won't say the same but similar okay so combination deposit means what what is the exact definition of combination deposit combination deposit is a deposit product that combines features of more than one deposit products features of more than one deposit but then you'll say what is this here it's like this recurring income fd means what here year i'll go on depositing recurring means what year i'll go on depositing for let's say 11 months simple i'll keep it and on maturity i'll get a full amount this full amount is transferred to my savings account right on maturity along with the interest so that is simple recurring but what is recurring come fd recurring come fd means on maturity this amount this amount won't be transferred to my savings account this amount will be made as a fd For future one year, two year, whatever that years are. Okay, so this is added, this is combined and added to this uh, recurring deposit. This is known as recurring deposit come FD. Otherwise, normal recurring what happens? This maturity comes, this amount is transferred to savings account. But here it is continued as an FD at whatever rate is applicable at that time. So this is known as a combination deposit, recurring deposit come FD. which of the following group of deposits now you read this let me check by the time which of the following group of deposits bring the overall cost of the funds down cost of the funds down very important part in banking nowadays cost of funding saving and recurring fdr and current current and savings casa current saving and fd who brings the cost of funds down very 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 basic and important question you at a jib level should know what is known meant by cost of funds cost of funds means that what cost do i borrow here what is my job i am in the bank so what do i do this is i am in this bank right bank so what do i do over here i get the deposit from here deposit deposit or we call it liability right deposit and i give the loans over here loan right so if loan is given at let's say 9% deposit is taken at let's say 7% so what should be my aim in life my aim in life or in the banking my aim in life banking should be i can't increase these rates so that because what happens the competition will kill me then if i make this 9 to 10 okay i should definitely try to make it 9 to 10 but i can't do it so what is the main job of remaining in my hand the main job is uh, bringing this down if i if i am able to bring this down from 7% to let's say 5% then what happens 
the difference between these two earlier it was this is called as nii 9 minus 7 2 percent was my nii nii right nii net interest income or spread we call it spread nii or spread we call it spread so this earlier it was 2 percent now 9 minus 5 it is 4 percent so my i am earning more so which will bring it down this bringing down will happen with Comment section, yes, of course, current account and savings account, because current account I am giving zero rate, right, and savings account at lowest at 3.5. So, this is your right answer. FD can't be the answer, because FD gives you a higher rate of, means, uh, gets a higher rate of interest. Recurring is similar to FD. What is the difference between recurring and FD? No difference. Recurring is a step-by-step -step FD, right, because you give the same rate of FD for the recurring deposit also, isn't it? Okay, move on. Banks obtain documents and information while opening the uh, deposit account with a view to means why do we get the documents that bring your other card, bring, bring your pan card, bring this, bring that. Nowadays it's not there. Nowadays uh, everything is thumb, right? EKYC everything is. But then also let's say EKYC. Why do you obtain EKYC? Either you get the documents physical or you get the EKYC. Why do you get this? Check the activities of the customer. Verify the identity of the customer. Check illegal transactions. Check large money transactions. What do you think? What do you think over here? What should be the answer? Yeah. Do you check the activities of the customer? Activities means where does this customer go? What does he do uh, in the full day? Whom does he meet? He or she meets? No, right? You can't check the activities of that customer. Identity, yes, I can say that. Because identity, whether you are the same person. Now, identity here means I can check the address also. Okay? Illegal transactions. How can I check the illegal transactions? Ah. Now it's possible, see this, nowadays the online transactions are so strong, social media or the online net is so strong, now that I can check somehow or the other, means some part I can check. But practically from your exam point of view, the answer is wrong. Why? Because I can't check the transactions of this, if new customer comes to me in the branch, I can check whatever he has done earlier. Okay? Check large money transactions, that is also not possible. That we are talking of opening the account. We are not talking of having the account. New account. Okay. So new account at the time of new account, you won't be knowing what this customer is, uh, how many transactions this customer will be doing, whatever will be the uh, large uh, large currency amounts. Okay. So the answer is verify the identity of the customer. That is the right answer. Okay. Got it, everyone? Which of the following documents are required by the banks to open? bank accounts for the purpose of identity and proof of address so which documents are required by the banks to open uh, bank accounts for the purpose of identity and proof of address so both we are talking of both okay identity also and proof of address also we are talking of both so ration card voter id card aadhar card and all of the above what do you think ration voter id aadhar and all of the above you think yourself in the bank what do you do while opening the account you think yourself what do you do while opening the account it is all of the above correct it is all of the above we take all the documents ration card also see here we don't ask for all the documents either of these ration card is okay if you don't have a ration card then do you have the aadhar card if you don't uh, this other card if you don't have other card do you have voter id card so this is what we check every customer now nowadays doesn't have a ration card right so we can get either of these only as such so the answer is all of the above Hi friends, welcome to Adder 24-7. We are in the Achiever series for RBW. Here we are covering the important theory, numericals and objective questions. So follow the series till the end because this is very useful for you from the exam point of view.
let's start without wasting the time which of the following one sir yeah you read this which of the following is true with regards to kyc form so which of them is true with regards to kyc form now what is kyc form kyc form is taken when we take a take a new customer on board right when we open the account of a new customer so generally at that time we do take even in between it's allowed now because it's not that one customer who is 10 years long uh, 10 years old he had given the kyc he or she had given the kyc while opening the account 10 years back after 10 years no kyc that's not allowed so now we have classified the customers as per the low risk high risk medium risk customers right and accordingly we do take the kyc forms so which of the following is true with regards to the kyc forms a it is statutory requirement for opening of the bank account b it is obtained with a view to know the customer and his background the information also serves the purpose for cross selling of other products to the customers and all of the above so what is true now we want what is true so what is this kyc part main part is compliance compliance part is okay means what is the use of kyc form first is compliance as per rbi directives you have to follow the compliance part right so that is done so that's why let's look from the compliance angle it is statutory requirement from for opening of the bank account so right statutory statutory means what compulsory requirement it is obtained with a view to know the customer and its background so again this is the compliance part background means we have to check what that customer has done whether this customer is a terrorist whether this customer is a fraud person so that is again the compliance part so a is okay b is also okay and c the information also serves the purpose for cross selling of other products to the customer now this is what you have to answer whether the answer is d over here whether c can be used uh, this kyc form can be useful for marketing purpose whether it can be useful for marketing purpose that's what you have to think now and that's what you have to answer a b or c let me see who can answer it a b or c means a b or d a b c or d d means all of the above so the answer is d correct see here kyc form is used for both the purposes it's not only compliance it is used for the marketing purpose also okay whenever the customer writes he has one car or he or she yeah, when i say he he means he or she he or she has one car he or she is married he or she has one or uh, children uh, own house or rented house so in that case you can target that customer for a new home loan if that customer doesn't have a car the, that customer writes the income that 5 lakhs income yearly 6 lakhs income yearly it means what 6 lakhs means 50,000 a month right so definitely you can get a 10,000 EMI from that customer okay so if 10,000 EMI is got means what how much loan can be given what type of loan can be given that's what the bank thinks and that's what is the marketing part that's why KYC form is used for both compliance and marketing so the answer is D all of the above which of the following information is not the part of KYC form? Not. Which of them is not the part of KYC form? Occupation, nationality, accommodation, conveyance, purpose of opening the account and none of the above. So which of them is not the part? Now this is what you think. Which of them is not the part? Is it required by the customer to give you that uh, purpose of opening the account? Suppose if I say, no, I don't know, want to give you why this account is opened. I want it for myself. I'm not giving you this reason. So is it allowed? What do you think? Occupation, nationality? Yes, that is to be given. Occupation means what is my income, whether I'm an Indian person. Accommodation conveyance means rented house, own house. Conveyance means do I have a car or two-wheeler? purpose of opening the account so now these a and b are required so they are apart but what about c 
is C the not the part of uh, account opening uh, form? Means is it that uh, I'm not required to give the purpose? What do you think, guys? Answer it A, B, C, or D. A, B, C, or D. Purpose. This is the only crux. Whether this is required, not the part. This one. Or is it D? None of the above. So this is a hint. Either C or D. So the answer is D. D. None of the above. Everything is a part of the account opening form. I have to give why am I opening this account. Because suppose let's say I open the savings account with you. And my plan is to get some business money in that savings account. Which if I give it. If I if I'm feeling that okay some business money will come. So I'll be putting it in this money. So that's not allowed. Business money is to be kept in the current account. So purpose of opening the account is a compulsory part. So all these are compulsory. I'll write it over here. Compulsory. Oh, I'll write it singly. Compulsory. All these are compulsory in account opening. Okay. So everything is a part of KYC form. But what do we want? We want not. So that's why D. The KYC form information enables the bank to A. Biographical B. Professional C. Social D. Credit profile of the customer Means this KYC forms use can be used for what? Bi biographical Professional means what, does the, what is the profession of that customer Social means what is the family status What is the income status What is the uh, house uh, Whether it's rented or owned Credit profile How much is the loan taken by that customer earlier so can we use this KYC form for this, for classifying that customer into these four or five categories? A to B all, A to B all means A to B only, A and D only, A to C, A, C and D. I think so it should be A to D all, D it should be, A to D all, okay. So can I use it for the same? Think over it, think over it. Yes, 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 yes. What can be the answer? Think of it. Yes. What can be the answer in this? Yeah, it is. Correct. A to D all. Everything. See here. Biographical. Biographical means what? See here. What is biographical? Biography. What is the word biography mean? Autobiography. Right? So, autobiography means what? My whole previous uh, whatever I have done in my life. So biography means the same part. Okay. So bi biography means whatever I have done in my life up till now. So can I get it from there? Yes, I can get it. Because if I am having a own house, it means I have worked somewhere. That's why I am having that own house. Or my parents might have given me ancestral property. Means anything. I might be from the rich family then. So biographical, professional, whatever I am doing. What is my income level? So that is professional. Social means as I give you this example, what is my family status? What is my car? Do I have a car? Do I have a own house? Credit profile, earlier loans. Okay, so the answer is D. A to D all. Answer is A. Credit products offered by the banks are traditional credit, credit schemes and market oriented new credit schemes. Which of the following is a part of traditional credit schemes? Now understand the difference. Traditional credit schemes and market oriented new credit schemes. What is all this traditional and market oriented? See this traditional means general your earlier loans which have been carried out since long ages. Now the names they are given over here. So that's why the question is traditional old long ages. I'll give you something about new also later. Cash credit and OD, demand loans and term loans, bill finance, all of the above. So which of them are the traditional products? Which of them? Is bill finance the traditional product? Is this OD 
or is this bill finance new term recently come in you might not have heard right many of you in the bank might not have heard about bill finance because many of the banks don't do it in many branches don't do it banks do it every bank does it so which of them is a traditional product you answer this traditional in the meantime i'll give you the new new credit schemes what are the new credit schemes new credit schemes means the later due to the it revolution whatever has come what has come due to the it revolution credit cards credit cards were never there earlier so credit cards credit cards right then after credit cards you have new consumer loans small amount consumer loans small ticket consumer loans okay less loan against security loan against shares you call it simple word less loan against share generally it is given for shares so these are new credit schemes which were not a part of the traditional credit schemes okay but what is the traditional then what is the answer let me see in the comment section what is the answer the answer is d all of the above cash credit and od it is the old system demand loans and term loans old bill finance old means these have been uh, carried out since 1900s or whenever the bank started what is ccod ccod is a loan which can be repaid any time on demand we call it on demand okay this is known as ccod on demand it can be paid whenever it's required by the bank or even the customer can repay it any time in ccod we only pay the interest every month we never pay the emi demand loans and term loans so demand loan means it's again the same part okay dscod term loan means your home loan simple home loan car loan these are all term loans where you pay emi emi in ccod we don't pay the emi we pay only interest we pay only interest over here bill finance bill finance is also on demand loan demand loan you can call it demand this is similar to ccod okay this is given for the customers who are having the additional demand for loan suppose if reliance comes to you so reliance will be having cc term loan even od and bill finance okay so the answer is all of the above got it which of the following is not included in the new market oriented retail schemes not included yeah not included in the new market retail or in, uh, retail credit schemes so which of them not included read the options home loans auto loans credit card receivables personal loan consumer loans none of the above not included yeah think over it think over it not included not included yes which of them is not included is home loan the part of new credit uh, new retail schemes nowadays new retail credit schemes means all loans basically retail loans is home loan the part of new retail loans nowadays auto loans is a part of that yes it is because i'll give you one simple uh, this uh, survey 60% of the bank's incomes nowadays comes from home loans 60% such a huge market this is auto loans is also a part of new credit schemes remember credit scheme doesn't mean credit card scheme credit card is different credit scheme is different credit means loans and credit card is a part of the loan okay so remember credit credit means loans this is a part of the loan it can be anything it can be one of them is credit card then one of them is home loan one of them is car loan okay car loan one of them is that less loan again shares everything you can go on and on credit card receivable so that is also a part of the new loan means loans so that is also a part personal loan and consumer loan that is also a part so which of them is not included in the new Uh, market oriented credit uh, credit schemes that is d none of the above all of them are included every loan is a part of your new credit scheme nowadays 
only the thing what has happened is home loans were there earlier also home loans are there now also then what has changed now the fastness speed that has changed customer acquisition has changed okay the other products that bank offers to their customers include which of the following remittance services now other products means what the products which are not the core products of the bank means what is the core product of the bank yesterday we saw it deposit and loans these are the core products of the bank so what are the other products there which are not the deposits or loans these are like remittances lockers okay which are not these are called as ancillary services so other products that bank offers to the customers include which of the following remittance services demand draft nft rtgs upi is it a to c all is it a and b only b and c a and c okay i'll ask you one question upi is upi offered by the bank or is it uh, give means does the customer come in the branch and then then does the upi he does, he or she does it from the home so is bank offering it or your branch offering it so is the answer only a and b then think over it what is the answer think the answer is yes a to c all see here everyone understand demand draft that is a payment system nowadays it's very less almost gone right who uses demand draft nowadays type uh, in the comment section how many of you have given the demand draft in last 6 months and how many demand draft one or two is it's okay some government officers still ask for those demand drafts nowadays nobody asks for the demand drafts right so demand draft nft nft is a regular feature every day we do give it isn't it rtgs rtgs we give it upi upi now upi is a catch over here see this many of you might think that upi this customer doesn't come to the branch does a customer come to the branch for upi no but then how can i say upi is given by my branch or my bank because it's on your app means it's a part of your total payment systems nowadays so that's why upi although the customer doesn't come to the branch then also it is, he is, he is using your services so that's why upi is a part of the bank's offerings so he or she the customer is using is a uh, anyone who's using the upi is a part of your banking system your banking system your bank remittance system okay so the answer is a to c all which of the following is a fee based service which the banks offer to their customers collection of checks safe deposit lockers merchant banking services portfolio management and home loans so which of them is a fee based service what do you say fee based think or it think or it this is a tricky one this is a difficult one yeah fee based now you'll see sir fee based is okay we understand something that uh, we take commission from that customer in either way sir fee based means what it can be in any form i can take a personal uh, direct fees or i can take some locker rent uh, locker rent means what what is rent rent is after all a sort of fee only isn't it so many of you might say that okay b is okay sir safe deposit locker we take the rent and uh, do it collection of checks where do we take the money from that customer suppose if i send a check for collection so do i take the for clearing that money no but for outstation checks we do take but are there outstation checks now that is also a point so see here as per theory as per your book collection of checks means outstation checks so i'll write it over here collection of checks okay equals to outstation outstation checks but these are very less now these have become less frequent almost who gives you outstation check today tell me in the city as age right so collection of checks gone okay means after all that is a part of your this fee based income 
but practically it's not there but in books for your jib exam it is there okay in your jib exam they still ask you about outstation checks why i don't know but they ask you so that's why you have to remember safe deposit locker yes merchant banking services you say sir what is this merchant banking i have heard it for the first time what is merchant banking i don't know what is merchant banking what is this merchant banking is a part of banking remember banking is of almost seven types what we do is just one part retail banking banking is of i'll give you some names see this retail then trade finance then agency service bank also does the agency service okay commercial banking universal banking uh, this uh, uh, this uh, what what do we call them wholesale banking okay these are all and merchant banking is one of them ipos what is merchant banking ipos when you i'll write it see here merchant banking over here means ipos when your reliance brings any ipo right we go go for those shares buy the shares so that is a service given by the bank itself some part of your bank is giving it you see the banker's name in those ipo forms they you'll find the name of the banks portfolio management right portfolio is a part of wealth management serving the customers means suppose if i am an hni high net worth customer very huge money 100 crores in my account 200 crores in my account so i'll have to manage that money i can't manage it on my own that's why i use the professional services and home loans so home loans is also a fee based income only we charge fees for that so that's why the answer is it is is it okay let me check this home loan is home loan a fee based I have told home loan, so everybody is typing home loan. Is home loan a fee based income? <coughs> Isn't it? Okay, I'll say. Okay, let's do one trick over here. I'll say the answer is A to E all. And what do you say? You say it A to E or do you say A to D? Home loan is not a part of fee based. Let me check. I'll say answer is A to E all. And you say A to D. Now what do you think? Is the option C or D? Think, think. Now this is a trick, and this is what we do. Okay, I'll give you one some simple logic. Home loans. Don't we charge fees to that customer while opening that home loan? Fees we charge. Then many of you might be feeling, yes, sir. Processing fees charged. So this is a fee-based income. But the answer is no. The answer is D. A to D all. Home loan is not a fee based income. The processing fees which we charge to that customer is for processing the uh, the hard work which we are doing. What all do we do? Do we do on home loan appraisal, visit, then that um, various other things like valuations, kind of uh, valuation report, getting that uh, valuation report, search and title report. For that, our employees required, and that is a processing fee. But that is not a fee based income. So the answer is A to D all. Answer is not A to E all. It is A to D all. Home loans is not a part of your this uh, fee based income. Letter of credit and guarantee are credit based, fund based offers. Fund based, huh? credit based, non fund based offers. Non credit based, fund based offers. And non credit based, non fund based offers. So firstly remember non credit is out because LC and guarantee are a part of credit loan they are a part of loans okay I'll give you a simple difference loans are of two types okay one is funded funded and second is non funded non funded okay funded means what again two types okay OD means demand OD you can call it, Chalo, overdraft, here it comes CC, CC, bill financing, everything and second is term loan, where you have EMIs and non-fund waste means there are many, there it comes LC, bank guarantee, there are many others, I will, I can give you 5-6 names more, availization, then uh, uh, that, uh, what do we call them? Uh, this PC, yeah, take out financing. That is all non non fund based. In fact, there can be many. For JIB level, you always remember the two LCBG. 
So this LCBGR credit based non fund offers non fund non fund based. Okay, this is a non funded loan. What is a non funded loan? It means whenever I issue an LC, I don't give the actual money out. I don't give the actual money out. It's just a guarantee or the word or letter from my side. Okay, more on this later. Which of the following is not true regarding the letter of credit? Not true. We want not true now regarding the LCs. It is a part of fee based business. Bank undertakes contingent liability by issue of LC. Bank may be called upon to make the payment in case of crystallization of the liability and none of the above. Not true. It is a part of fee based business, so it is true because we do charge fees for the LC. Bank undertakes contingent liabilities. Contingent liability. Okay, contingent means uh, right now I don't have to give the money, but in future I may have to. That is known as contingent, where the actual flow of money is not there right now. Okay, flow of money, money, okay, not there right now, but in future it might be. Bank may be called upon to make the payment. So this is what I called a called, uh, called a future means in future bank may be told to pay us, okay, or to pay that party. So the answer is none of the above. Okay, correct. Let me see how many of you have typed correct D. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> when a bank earns revenue by selling third party products like insurance policies, such business is classified as fund based banking, para banking and marketing activity. So what is that called as? Insurance you sell. What is this insurance business called as? We call it TPP, right? Third party product. That's what we call it. Right? So TPP. But what is the actual word for this? Third party is okay. Third party is one part of something. So this line is called as para banking. Remember, para banking means that banking which is not a core product of the bank. It is it has many names, ancillary services, third party products, para banking, all these. Okay, so when the bank earns the revenue by selling the third party products like like insurance policies here like it means third party products are many Write two third party products which you sell two of them One is insurance second one What do you sell guys generally in the comment section do type? What do you sell generally? you sell insurance and mutual funds